Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Block, and I'm Chief of Thoracic Surgery for the Memorial Cancer Institute here in Hollywood, Florida. As a general thoracic surgeon, one of the things that I see quite frequently is lung cancer. And I have the same conversation with many patients, introducing them to the basics of lung cancer and how we approach lung cancer care. So I thought it would be helpful to put together that information in a short video so that my patients can review the information and other patients can understand a little bit more about the basics of lung cancer. We'll put together several videos, the first of which will be an overview of lung cancer, and then we'll also discuss treatment strategies as well as imaging, CAT scans and PET scans. A lot of these topics are overwhelming for patients who are first learning about the diagnosis, and so I think it's helpful to have a lot of that on a video that they can refer to to help them understand. So let me start with what is lung cancer? Well, lung cancer is a cancer that begins in the lungs. Frequently, it's associated with smoking, but about 20% of people with lung cancer are non-smokers, and many people with lung cancer are former smokers. Cancers that arise in the lungs begin as small tumors and then grow to be slightly larger and eventually can be quite large. The dangerous thing about cancers is that they can spread to other parts of the body. So lung cancers can spread. Usually when they begin to spread, they first show up in lymph nodes, and we'll talk about that, and then they can spread to sites outside of the lungs. Lung cancer, it's important to distinguish from other cancers that can spread to the lungs. For example, some kinds of cancers like breast, colon, pancreas will start in that organ, become a cancer, and then spread to the lung with a deposit of cancer in the lung. That is not considered a lung cancer and is treated differently than lung cancers. So it's important to remember that a lung cancer is a cancer that begins in the lungs. There are several major types. They're divided into non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer. And non-small cell lung cancer is about 80% of all lung cancers. Small cell lung cancers are about 20%. And the treatment is slightly different, but I'll leave that to your discussions with your physicians. For those specifics. When we evaluate patients with lung cancer, one of the things we first want to understand is what's called the stage. The stage is a scale that goes from one through four and it helps us to understand how advanced the cancer is. So for example, a stage one lung cancer is a tumor that's only in the lung, small, surrounded by lung tissue, and has not shown signs of spreading anywhere. When lung cancers begin to spread, usually the first place they show up is in lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are little tiny glands. They're about the size of a pea. They're part of our immune system, and we have them all over our body. You may be familiar with lymph nodes in the neck. When you get a sore throat, sometimes the glands in your neck are swollen. Those are lymph nodes. So we have lots of lymph nodes in the chest and in the lungs. The lungs are exposed to the outside world. There's lots of germs that get into our lungs all the time. And so our lungs are really equipped to fight off infections. There are a lot of lymph nodes in the lungs and in the central part of the chest. So when a cancer begins to spread, we often see it first in the lymph nodes in the lung, and then in the lymph nodes in the middle part of the chest. That's called the mediastinum. So that corresponds to stage two and stage three cancers. And then if it spreads beyond the lungs, that's called a stage four. If it shows up in another part of the body, like the liver or the brain or the bone. Those are common sites for metastasis from lung cancer. Metastasis means it has spread someplace else. So I have a couple models I'd like to show you to help you understand a little bit more. This is a life-size model of the right lung. And as you can see, it has three lobes. There's an upper lobe, a middle lobe, and a lower lobe. And if you look at it from the sides, you can see that the lower lobe is about half of the right lung, and the upper and the middle lobe are the other half. Now the left lung, there's an upper lobe and a lower lobe, and that's because the heart sits slightly to the left side, and so this indentation is from the heart. It turns out that about 55% of lung function comes from the right lung, and about 45% comes from the left. And that's important when we start talking about treatments for lung cancer that involve surgery. But if you have a lung cancer, it's important to know exactly where it is, because that can affect treatment. This model is very helpful because it helps us to understand the anatomy of the lung and why that's important in understanding lung cancer. So for example, here's the right lung. It has the upper lobe, the middle lobe, and the lower lobe. If there's a tumor or a cancer in the upper lobe of the lung, when it begins to spread, we would first start to see it moving through the lung into the lymph nodes 
that are here in the root of the upper lobe. That's called the hilum. The hilum is the term we use to describe the base or the root of the lung. The next step from these lymph nodes into lymph nodes around the main windpipe or the trachea. This is called the subcarinal space here in the trachea. Lymph node involvement in this region means that it's now a stage three. So stage one, tumor just in the lung. Stage two, if it's involving lymph nodes in the hilum. And stage three, if it's involving lymph nodes in the middle part of the chest or the mediastinum. So I've reviewed briefly the concept of lung cancer staging and the scale from one through four. That's really important because it tells us a lot, not only about prognosis, but also about the right treatment approach. So for example, a stage one lung cancer, a tumor that's only in the lung and has not spread anywhere, we know from experience that the very best treatment for that is surgery. Surgery to remove the part of the lung that has the cancer in it. So for example, the very best treatment is called a lobectomy, and that's an operation where we remove the lobe that contains the tumor. A lot of people ask me why we can't just cut out the tumor. If it's small, it's near the surface of the lung, technically we can do that. We generally don't recommend it though because results show that the chances of being cured are better if we have a lobectomy than if we just remove the tumor. The chances of the cancer coming back are greater if we just remove the tumor. So under most circumstances, we recommend doing a lobectomy. Now I talked earlier about how the right lung is 55% of lung function, the left lung is 45%. You can see here on this model, the lower lobe is a very large lobe, the middle lobe is very small. So removing a lobe can have a major impact. If we take out the lower lobe, that's taking out a lot of lung function. If we take out the middle lobe, that's not taking out very much. So the decision about surgery has as much to do with the location of the tumor as it does with lung function. So although surgery may be the best treatment for a stage one lung cancer, sometimes patients aren't candidates for surgery. Either they have bad comorbidities, meaning they have other significant health issues, heart disease or stroke, or something that means the risk of surgery would be very high, or they have very poor lung function from years of smoking and bad emphysema, and removing a part of their lung would leave them too short of breath to have any quality of life. In those circumstances, we recommend alternatives, and probably the best alternative is radiation treatment. There's a form of radiation called stereotactic body radiotherapy. That's abbreviated SBRT. There are a number of companies that make systems that do that. Probably the best well-known is the CyberKnife system. That's a trade name for that type of radiation. And the idea is that the radiation sends beams from several different directions, very high intensity X-ray beams that focus right on the tumor to kill the tumor in place without damaging the surrounding tissue. That treatment is very easy for patients to go through. It's usually three to five treatments. There's essentially very few complications associated with it, and it doesn't remove any lung function. At present, we're not sure how that compares in the long run to surgery. If we're just gonna cut out the tumor, it's probably the same. But if we're gonna take out the entire lobe, most of us will recommend a lobectomy over the radiation, believing that it is probably better in the long run. Now for stage two lung cancer, it's a little different. Remember stage two means that the cancer has already shown signs of spreading. It involves the lymph nodes in the root of the lung. So we still remove the lobe that contains the tumor, but then we recommend chemotherapy afterwards. And the reason for that is that if the tumor has shown signs of spread into the lymph nodes, then that means there's a good chance it's in other parts of the body that we just can't see. And the only way to treat those cancers is with chemotherapy. Stage three lung cancer is very different. By that time, the cancer has spread into the lymph nodes in the middle part of the chest. And that means the risk of the cancer being someplace else is very high. We generally do not recommend surgery for patients with stage three lung cancer. And that's because removing the original tumor is not gonna help. What they need is chemotherapy. They need treatment that's gonna treat the cancer cells throughout the entire body. That's what's gonna help them achieve a cure. And so those patients generally get chemotherapy first. Now, sometimes it's treated along with radiation treatments for the tumor, and in a few patients, some cases, we recommend surgery after they've completed their chemotherapy and radiation therapy. But the important thing to remember is that with stage three, the best treatment is chemotherapy. Some people just want the tumor out, and that's conceptually a decent idea. Unfortunately, that doesn't help them get rid of the cancer. They need the chemotherapy. 
In stage four lung cancer, where the tumor is spread beyond the chest to other organs in the body, then chemotherapy is the mainstay. It treats cancer throughout the body. And radiation therapy is reserved to treat specific areas of problem. For example, if there's a spread of the cancer into the bone and somebody's having pain, radiation therapy is very useful to treat that site of cancer in the bone. So that's an overview of lung cancer treatment and an idea of how we approach diagnosis and staging. I'd like to talk some more about some other issues, but we'll confine those to other videos so this one doesn't get to be too long. Thank you.